All right, everybody, I would like to welcome you to our first sec session of the Recording Roundtable. My name is Todd Gilbert uh, from Backroom Studios, and we have with us Mr. Joseph James over here from Vehicle City Studio. How you Studio, doing? How you doing? And Anthony Lee here from Flatlander Audio Recording. Howdy, everybody. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hello. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Absolutely, man. I thought it would be cool to... Um, start out by kind of giving people a rundown of where where we came from you know where each person sure. you know what got you into what you're doing uh what inspired you to get into the business that you're in and uh you know just kind of get to know each other a little bit so uh right on uh tony you want to go first uh sure um man i've been playing music for the better part of 20 years now uh started fresh out of high school like a lot of us do you know uh yeah. Played a lot in Flint, actually. Uh, Flint Local 432 was my very first show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same Joel here. Rat, Cowboy Chris. Uh, yes. Yeah, man. It was an amazing time to be in a scene. Actually, I kind of pined for those days in some ways because it was such a tight-knit, yeah. awesome time. But, yeah. Um, came up Did you around. start out in the uh, Carlton Building local? Um, that's the one on, uh, off Saginaw, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be the one. That yep, was me, me too. Sure. Yeah, it was awesome. It was such a good time. And uh, I live in Carroll, which is a good hour away from Flint, you know, but they were always super welcome. And uh, tons of us kids here had a blast. So that's where I kind of started getting my foot wet. Synthesizer, uh, piano is where I mainly started playing, <clears throat> instrumentally speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in choir in school, so I also sang a lot. And um, bands, 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 many years <laughs> passed by. Um, Eventually, I become an adult who can afford to buy his own gear, right? So uh, that happened uh, in the mid-2000s, I'd say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was living in Grand Rapids at the time, and we, uh, I was in a band called Pearl Snap Western Brown. and we had just <laughs> Band name is incredible. Dude, it, awesome. was it was rough. <laughs> Introducing ourselves <laughs> at bars. People were like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. But, uh, yeah, in hindsight, maybe not the best name, right? But uh, we recorded a really badass EP, and um, but it cost cost us a lot of money, and you know we were strapped for cash. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, we came up together and we decided the next EP we're gonna do, we're gonna record it ourselves. We're just yeah. gonna figure it out because you know we all had eight tracks from our dads and stuff like that, but we never were like. Let's do it all ourselves and let actually figure out what all this means, you know? Mm -hmm. So we finally did that. And, uh, you know, I've just been messing with it ever since. That's awesome, man. And yeah. I, I find that a lot of people that get into this, um, it does start that way. It starts out of necessity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's usually right. a lot of times it's musicians, not always, but a lot of times it's musicians that, like you said, don't really have the budget to be jumping into these multi-million dollar recording right. studios and they got to find a way to make it happen and that's how a lot of a lot of us get started um i was the same way i came up um i started playing back in oh i'm gonna age myself back in 94 hey when I, is when i started playing and uh <laughs> i uh, my first show too was at the flint local um the first gig i ever did first like professional gig uh was at the local uh the bill was myself uh ashley peacock and amanda somerville oh man that dates me a lot um ah. and uh angus matt running the soundboard hey. yep and uh of and, course and, oh yeah man this gruntled angus oh yeah. but he was so good he, he, oh yeah he had, a blast. He had such an amazing year and <laughs> disgruntled I, angus huh? <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's still fantastic um absolutely and i started hanging out with a lot of people who were into this kind of thing um i got to know the guys in may june and they had their own personal studio mm -hmm. um i got to hang out a lot with uh jim forniatis <clears throat> who uh was uh the leader of uh, the band's rats of unusual size they used oh, to play at the Oak all the time yep. yeah mm -hmm. yeah um and, and yep, uh marshall, no Gary. yeah and uh marshall block at real to real um out ah, in Fenton, genius and those those people were really my um my doorway into it um i always say marshall's kind of my mentor because he was one of the first studio people to see that i had a, a passion for wanting to learn it and took me under his wing and really tried to in, 
uh, instill on me things that he knew to give me sure. the keys to go out and do my own thing. He, he always said that he was teaching me so eventually I wouldn't need him anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. And, but I think that's amazing. And that's kind of what I want to sort of do with this is I want to show people what we know. And yeah, I mean, we're here to offer our services if anybody wants to work with us. Absolutely. But it's also really cool for me to empower other people to right. do the same thing that we're doing. And it started, I was the same way. I, I wanted to record an album and I had stopped playing music for a while because I was in bar bands for so long and got kind of burnt out on that whole situation. And yep. then uh, we did the Building yep. Birds thing. And um, after having a bunch of uh, drama with a record label that ended up really taking advantage of us and I just kind of, and it wasn't anything personal at all, but I just kind of got burnt out on music altogether. And so yeah. I stopped for a few years, but then I started writing again, just out of nowhere. And I'm like, man, I really don't have the money to spend on going in a recording studio, spending thousands of dollars to do these things. And so I started researching, doing it myself. And Ashley Peacock had uh, moved back to Flint during this time. He was in Cincinnati and Kentucky for the longest time. And he um, opened up a studio, which uh, was next door to where, Jay, uh, where, uh, where, uh, where uh, Joe is right now. And he, he taught me Jay's a lot, fine. too. And I mean, I, you know, the name on the bottom is throwing me off. <laughs> I haven't said it yet, and I can't oh, say it while we're it talking. So. Oh, okay. Thank you. But, uh, um, Using my government, Todd. <laughs> as we used to say in wrestling using your shoot name um, yeah. <laughs> um so i got to go there and really kind of uh get my feet wet there and um i got logic and started learning on Tell that and uh, yeah that's ever since that's the, the the daw that i've just fell in love with but um <clears throat> through that experience i started like you said acquiring my own gear uh, finally building my own studio in, in my home and been having a lot of fun ever since. Right. It's a blast. It really is. Uh, what about you, Jay? What, uh, what got you started in all this craziness? Well, a little different than you guys. I actually didn't pick up a drumstick until I was 27 years old. Never too late, though. And Yeah, I was, a, I was sheerly a fan of music. And I mean, I, obviously, I, I was hearing things that I guess my friends maybe weren't and feeling things differently with music than and it just never dawned on me that that there was this thing happening with music in me you know right. mm -hmm. and I just kind of was going through life and then a buddy of mine um he's no longer a buddy of mine ironically but this guy in Nashville that I was living in Nashville Tennessee at the time I lived there for 10 years and um he was in a just the dustiest metal band you can imagine you know? <laughs> And um, I went to one of his shows and, um, you know, the place was packed. It was Nashville, you know. So I kind of seen then that it was like, okay, well, maybe there's actually some fun to be had in this whole music thing that I've been mm -hmm. having kick around in the back of my head, you know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I make a long story short. I came back to Michigan and um, had some things happen that ended up with me needing an outlet for frustrations and such. So I took to the drum kit. And then my friend, who is still a good friend, um, Sean Pillen, had a band called uh, Six Seconds to Oblivion here in Flint. Mm -hmm. And I went, I went to the machine shop and seen them perform, and my life has never been the same. That's um, awesome. It was, it, it, when I seen that, I realized that this was something that a guy like me could do. And, and you know, then as far as the studio goes, um, I was in a band called Wild Rome Burns, and... Um, we were working hard in Flint and, and had played shit 200 some odd shows. Anyways, um, we get to the studio finally after all these shows and all this work and the guy charged us $75 an hour and, and, and did just shoddy work. And this is back then. It was, it, yeah, yeah. And this right. was, this what, was what year was six, this? seven years ago. Six, seven so this years was ago? 2014. Yeah, 2014. Okay. So, I realized then I'm like, okay, well, the money is clearly not on the performer side of the microphone, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then, as I as I as I started to develop my passion for this side, our side of the microphone, um, 
I realized really how much creativity can be in, in the production field. And it just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, playing music has become secondary to helping other people play music at this yeah. point now in my life. So yeah, I opened, I opened with the intention, I went to school with the intention of creating a studio where people can go and record without breaking their bank, you know, and where did and you, where did you go to school? I went to school to Mott. Okay. You know, I graduated from Mott in uh, 2017. Nice. Degree from uh, good old Dr. Witham over there and Dr. Furman wow. and Dr. Miller. Awesome. Awesome program. I absolutely, anybody watching this, if you're in Michigan, mid Michigan area and you're into music technology, please go check out my community college. Their, their music program in general is fantastic. I was, absolutely. I, I went to Mott and I was in choir there and uh, so I was a choir nerd my whole life, you know. Same. Dr. Um, Packer. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Right after. Yep. I only did it for one year, the choir part, but it was a blast. They were, they were fantastic. So, um, so here we are. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I love what you said about an alternative to, um, to people who don't have a huge budget. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think especially nowadays in, in the scene that we're in and in the grand scope of everything, I think that's huge. I think the, the playing field nowadays, um, my buddy Tony Gray said this to me the other day, the playing field nowadays with technology and everything as it is, is completely level nowadays. Yeah. <clears throat> There's not much that somebody with a home studio can do that somebody like say Metallica can record. It's all in just right. the know, the know how the willing to learn and dedication, just dedication. Exactly. And I, I really think that now more than ever, I mean, yeah, we, we all need money to, to, pay our bills and keep the lights on but a lot of us have you know other i like to call them side hustles for yeah. <laughs> for that you know where you have a day a, job a day or, job yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. where it can go back to being more about the art and less about watching a clock and how much money can i get out of this session right I've, 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 yeah i've never found it very can i mean i have nothing against anybody making money and being paid what they're worth i understand oh, no. that uh, that's that's great and i and mm -hmm. i uh, i applaud anybody that can do it but for yeah. me what it really boils down to is like you know a lot of people aren't ever going to get that experience if there's not some sort of middle ground you know because yeah. a lot of bands uh locally speaking they just don't have uh the contacts even really mm -hmm. to you know get to the studio that is going to make them sound good enough or whatever and so this provides right. them an alternative where they can come to a studio like ours and I kind of consider it like a project studio where you kind of work with me in tandem instead of me being in charge of the session yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like, I mean if you want me to take a producer role I'm willing to give it a shot but yeah. absolutely it's more, yeah. it's more of a it's more of a workshop idea here where it's just kind of like what does this do and then I show you what it does and then mm -hmm. you know cause that way nobody's worried about time issues and stuff like right. that I try not to I try not to do anything by an hour I mean we give general estimates of course from sure. 10 to 6 or whatever but if we go until 8 or whatever I, I'm into it. I'm into Same it as long as, we're working, as long as we're working hard and I'm not getting shitty takes. Ah. And, right. <laughs> and, and a common, is, common yeah. misconception among bands is that they think that they're going to record six songs in six hours. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's take, never man, going to happen. Yeah. Not, not, not every album can be kill them all, folks. It just, <laughs> right. it just nor, can't happen. Nor do we really... I mean, I love Metallica. I love Kill 'Em All, but nor do right. we want every album to no. be. No, if they still sounded like that, they wouldn't be famous. Exactly, because <laughs> um, growth is huge. But um, yeah, I've always thought that that was a better way to treat the studio. Um, and Ash used to use this term all the time. It's a creative space, right? Yeah, you know, the the studio itself is another instrument in the equation. The person right. engineering the record and mixing the record, even the guy mastering the record, sometimes it's the same person the whole time. Sometimes right, it's right. not. But those people are all other members of the musical project. Absolutely. You know, I've, always, I've always thought that the studio <clears throat> and the mixer were very vital parts in the creation of it. Because anybody, you know, you can record what you're playing or whatever, but 
sure. It takes a lot for 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 somebody to make it sound like something. You, right, exactly. Yeah. You're, you're you're not just recording a song. You're recording a moment. You're recording the mood. You're you're trying to get emotion right. across. And yeah. I always thought it was our job, as the people you know pushing the buttons or whatever, to help them emote what they're saying. Sure. It's not so much about easier. about huh. I said it's never been easier to help people with that either. You know, with absolutely. All the tools that we've got. I mean, can you imagine if back in '94 uh, oh, we would have had plugins? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Same. Like it's, instead of tape, I, I the first record I cut was on tape. Same. Eight at tape. Yep. Disgusting. Yeah. It broke two times before the record. <laughs> <happened>. <laughs> yeah and the editing was horrible oh, editing absolutely. was just a mess oh yeah yeah the first thing yeah ours was on an adat tape too and i mean oh, there's something about yeah. the sound of, there's something about the sound of tape i'll give you that but absolutely but absolutely. in today's modern technology i got a plug-in for that todd me too yeah. <laughs> there's we'll we'll talk about plugins in a minute believe you me i can i can, I can yeah, exactly. fan boy out on some plugins but um, um um but what with what people listen to music on mostly anymore it's their cell phone or exactly. their computer or their tv they're not going to listen on these really huge high fidelity systems that analog is going to make that much of a difference Right, right. Yeah, or it's, they're it's, listening in their car where it's super bass heavy and everything. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. Right. And I mean, it's awesome to have the analog gear if you can afford it nowadays. Uh, yeah. But is it a necessity? I really, I really never. Th I don't think so. No, for they're they're gonna take alone. Yeah. You know, it, it's so much quicker to to just be able to turn on one interface with two inputs, you know, unless you're doing drums, obviously, but you know, two inputs, plug, plug, boom, you can make an entire record now with yeah. just this little tiny box. It's, it's awesome. I've and, been watching a lot of I mean, and shoot. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you're going to bounce everything into an MP3 anyways. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're losing all of that stuff anyways. So yeah. why are we, why are we talking about a six hour editing session? Because you're cutting and pasting tape. Right. When we yeah. can do it in 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Eight well, S. I'm sorry. I love it. I, I know guys, record lovers and everything. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. gone. It's, it's just not, it's not needed. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been watching a lot of, um, I, I didn't really go to school for it. Um, part of me wishes I would have, but um, most of my stuff's been a lot of self taught. And I, I, YouTube is my classroom, basically. Oh, and that's um, that can be the way. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I sure. literally, when I started, I spent weeks glued to YouTube channels like uh, Mixing with the Masters, mm -hmm. um, uh, Pensando's Place is a, is a fantastic one, um, uh, the Slate Digital YouTube sure. channel. And they bring in all these amazing, and Full Sail has uh, a great YouTube channel too. And they bring in all these world class mixers and they sit right there and tell you every trick they know. Right, right. You know, and their, their knowledge or their reasoning behind it is because back in the old days, people wouldn't do that because, oh, well, you're going to, you know, teach yourself right out of the job. But in reality, I mean, that's just not realistic because yeah, that's a cop out. It is because even though you're teaching them, your tricks they're not going to sound like you only you have your ears. absolutely right and let so, me ask you this too what exactly is the harm in telling somebody how to make something sound better why would you right. want to withhold that information yeah <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. exactly and like i i love uh my favorite person to listen to talk about this kind of stuff is uh chris lord algae because he's, yeah. oh, yeah. he's hilarious oh, yeah. he's hilarious he's yeah, hilarious people also, out there watching get Get you some Chris Lord algae in your yes. life. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yes. Cause he's so blunt, but he's so right. Like he's right to the point. Brilliant. Like yep. the, the the video I was watching today, he said he views his audio plugins and his studio and his board and his gear and everything as just different paint colors on this giant canvas. And there's no right or right or wrong way to make a or sorry, there's no wrong way to make a sound. There's a lot I of use right that ways. analogy when but when people are like in the Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton mm -hmm. argument, that's what I tell people is like, why, why would I use somebody else's paints when I can create a great painting with my paint and, and my yeah. paint is Logic, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. So I'm not, I can use Pro Tools, but mm -hmm. 
it's the picture is not going to be as pretty. And you know it's, what I mean? It's, it's just not. And uh, honestly, so many D DAWs are all the same. In in a sense, in a sense, and it's really just what you're more comfortable with um, interface wise. You know, right. personally, I prefer Logic because I feel it's a little more user friendly for the not super technical people like myself. Um, <laughs> you know, if if someone you know wanted a whole bunch of technical questions about you know how I EQ'd this thing and what you know did I take some 8K out of blah blah blah, my my default answer and it's uh, I steal it from Daniel Lenoir, but I just say I turn knobs till it sounds cool. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I like I know I know what my ears like to hear, but can I tell you how I get there every time? No. Right, right. You've um, invoked Ashley a couple times tonight, and that's that's something he taught me is is to never mix with your eyes. You know, we, we use we use EQs and we've got all this mm -hmm. linear stuff in front of us, and we're like, sure. oh well that we're, we're, we've raised that EQ way too high. That, that mm -hmm. looks way too high. If it sounds good, it sounds good. Period. Yes. Right. Yes. A, a, a great example. <laughs> um, and somebody that I've been talking about on Facebook lately, and I've been getting some pushback, and I'd like your guys' opinion on this too. Um, I've really been listening to Billie Eilish's stuff a lot lately. I saw your um, post. Listening to that album. And honestly, it blows my mind, but in a positive way. And it to me... What the album illustrates is just what we're talking about, is that anybody with the drive to do it can do it, and you don't need a big, huge studio. They made right. that entire album in her bedroom. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was the, professionally the are, mastered are, are and stuff later, but yeah, yeah. One song was just yeah. lighting of a match, was the drum, was the snare mm. sound. And there's these great I videos think his where- Phineas? Yeah. Isn't his name Phineas? Yeah. 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 Genius That's producer. Her, yeah, her brother, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Puts in the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And they didn't so have many... Xboxes in their room. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. They had an interface and a Mac, you know what I mean? Yep. And, and, and now here they are. Well, and the benefit, so. too, with the home studio and stuff is, and like they talk about, it's immediate. So right. the minute you have an idea, there's no space. You can jump right over to the console or the piano or whatever, get that idea out, and, and you're boom. done. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of that too. And a lot of people, I've had some people, um, and I'm not going to put people on blast or anything. That's not my style, but, um, there are people that buck against the whole idea of recording in the bedroom and stuff like that. Um, because okay. a lot of them just, <laughs> right. <laughs> just, <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, who, who are just not convinced that without millions of dollars of studio gear, you can't do this. And lack of confidence, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think there's yeah. a difference. I think there's a difference between buying a $50 Tascam and, and making, trying to, and, and now, now you're a record producer. Right. And, right. and actually putting in the money, yeah. in the, you know, not thousands of dollars, right. But an interface, a computer, mm -hmm. the actual things you need. Yeah. Because we, we do have a lot, we do have a right now, CD Baby and, and Spotify are absolutely flooded with Tascam records. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? And so, and I think that that's something that the public, that your, your average musician, your average Joe musician doesn't really think about is they're just right. like, oh yeah, that sounds great, but it can sound way better at, 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 Flat, at Flatlander Audio. It can sound right, right. way better at Backroom Studios. And, and you don't have to pay all this kinds of crazy money. No. Right. And I, I know people that have gone to studios just as a, as a broad example where the, the, they will be charged. Like, I think it's, I've heard anywhere between 25 to $3,000 a song. Sure. And that's <laughs> recording it, mixing it, mastering it and all that stuff. Yep. Yep. And I think, especially in today's economy and everything, you're pricing yourself right out of your own business. Sure. You know what sure. I mean? Um, and and then we wonder why people are recording records on their iPhone. Right. right. Absolutely. They don't have any alternative anymore. <laughs> right. right. And I think there's even like, there's some movie coming out that was completely filmed on nothing but an iPhone. Wow. Like, which, is, which is great for the technology. I'm not trying absolutely. to this iPhone. Right. But, yeah, but you're be right though. You're, you're right though in, in the Again, fact part that. Part of it stems to that dedication aspect we talked about earlier. You know, if yeah. you really want to, if you're really serious about recording your band by yourself, then you're going to spend a little bit more than that task cam is. 
you're gonna go for yeah. you know the personas or the you know focus right or whatever it is mm -hmm. you know you're gonna go for that and learn yeah. from there and you know I've there's nothing wrong with using a Taz cam to record your demos and your you know right, what I mean right, sure right absolutely not yeah and I mean mm -hmm. I'm not even I'm not arguing that you could probably make a hella great sounding record off it but I'm betting you that it's gonna take you a lot more work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you could do it I'm sure oh sure and you know yeah, I mean, that's exactly, it's, it's how much time and effort you're willing to put in, you know? Mm -hmm. And like he was saying, like uh, Jay was saying about, um, still, you both were about investing in yourself yep. and investing yes. in the gear. And yeah, you might not have the money to get everything right away, but you can piece it out. You can, you, you know, time, and, you know, and there's great websites like, um, I use American Musical Supply a lot. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I use they, Zounds, which is their direct yeah, competitor. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they let you order a piece of gear and make installment payments, but you get the gear Absolutely. right away. So you right. can start making your money or whatever you're going to be doing with it right away and yep. pay for it at the same time. Guys, I'm, I'm making payments on pretty much everything you see here. And, and you know I mean, I mean? But, 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 you're, but you're doing it. You know what right. I mean? Right. And I think that is, you know, in my studio, the most expensive things in my studio is, is probably my laptop. You know what I mean? It's a MacBook Pro. Those are, you know, oh, cool. Hold on a second. Yeah, I saw that too. I was like, hey, unlimited minutes. Hooray. Yeah, on our first meeting, we get to go as long as we want. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I bought a MacBook because I'm a Mac person, not a Mac snob, but like, I find it works better for me, like audio recording and sure. stuff like that. Um, and I freaking you know, hate Max, but I got one. Me too. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the, the, the biggest things I spent money on was, like you said, a computer and an interface. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I got, uh, mine's the Behringer, it's the FCA 610. It's got Midas preamps in it. it. It sounds fantastic. And it was only a couple hundred. I think hundred Anthony bucks. and I are both. I think Anthony and I are both firing on sapphires. Are you not? Aren't you still? Um, I actually I got the Scarlet eighteen i twenty. Ah, how is it? I mean, it? I love it. It's it's clear. What I like about the Focusrite preamps usually is that they don't add really any color at all. Mm -hmm. What you're hearing is pretty much just what the microphone is picking up. That's so awesome. For my yeah. main for my main preamps, those are usually what I go through, and uh, I'm running an Octo Pre. Uh, change via ADAT too, so I pretty much have yep. 16 channels of the focus right clean stuff, and then I can add other stuff nice. on top of it to get my color. Yeah, yeah. So, what tips would and we'll go around, I'll go around here. Uh, Jay, we'll start with you. Uh, what tips would you have for somebody who is wanting to um, embark on this on their own? If if you if you knew somebody that wanted to start their own home recording. Um, what, what tips did you give them from your learned experience that you would impart on to somebody new? Well, um, I would say a couple of things that we've mentioned, American Music Supply and Zounds would mm -hmm. be probably my first tip as far as get your gear where you can afford it. Yeah. Um, and then as, along with that, I would say, watch out for used gear. Yeah. Yes. Break stuff and then... People yes. break stuff in the audio field and then they sell it to you and pretend that it works and you get it and then they disappear. So be yep. careful with that stuff. We had that happen when we opened, <laughs> when we opened the studio. We, um, we ordered a Motu uh, interface Ooh, yeah. for, but on yeah. eBay and it didn't work. Rip. Mm -hmm. Yep. I ordered an Octopri. <laughs> we ordered an Octopri and, and, and we were like, really vigilant about it and it came in it had no way to add, no uh, to hook it up it's basically just a eight preamp channels that have to hook up to an interface it's ridiculous so right. to, uh Bye. tony say the uh, same question for you what would uh what are some things you would impart on uh on, on the same situation uh well you want to start recording yourself i would say um you know i would say really do the research really do the homework Decide what kind of sound you, as a band, you are. Because I mean, I don't mean to, I don't want you to pigeonhole yourself, of course. But you know, you're a, you're a metal band, or you're a rock band, or you're a this or a that. Realize, uh, in maybe in uh, business terms, what you are, and then make your 
purchases based on that decision. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Great. Are you, uh, Great. You know, uh, a low key band that takes Nev style stuff, or are you like a poppier stuff that takes the API, the bright, the super bright, and you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're the pop punk band, maybe you want the API or whatever the the VST, the preamp, whatever you want to get. But you know, really try to like make a educated decision. Watch Chris Lord algae videos. Watch um, Steve Albini is one of my yes, and I yes. love listening to that guy because again, just a straight shooter, no yeah. bullshit. And I really feel like that guy is in it for the passion of the sound engineering. Yeah, just straight up. He just wants to record your record. That's one of my things I respect about him the most. You know, he'll record anybody. You pay him, mm -hmm. he'll record. Them. It doesn't matter. You know, and that's the yeah. attitude that I would really like to have, no matter how big I ever got was come down to my studio, hang out. I'm going to record you. That's awesome. What, but, wasn't it Albini that recorded Nirvana for like $2? Right. Right. I'm not like, sure. If he, he, had, he, had he, this, was, he had this thing where that wouldn't surprise me. He had right. this thing where if it was a band that he didn't really care for, he charged them normal studio rates, but <sighs> if he loved them, he didn't charge them anything. Right, and right. I, if I if I remember right, he recorded it like in utero for like two dollars, just wow. to have something you know, on the books. You know what I mean? I do know that he refused producer credits. He yeah. only, I'm pretty sure he only took sound engineer credits, mm -hmm. not producer credits. So yeah. that also wow. gave him quite a bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, up on the cash of in utero, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and what a there's great some other too. really good engineers too. Um, on the opposite side of the coin there um oak felder's really good mm -hmm. yeah. um I, I, you got the classic guys the uh damn it the names escaping me now um i'm a big uh i love andrew sheps a lot uh andrew sheps has some really great stuff um he's got some great plugins too he he does a lot of uh oh yeah that, i was like why is that name i'm not familiar yeah, with the, what, what is he uh what band he, or he's an engineer a uh, sound oh, mixer okay. he mixes he did uh he maybe that i've heard uh he did green day uh oh, okay. the 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 three um the uno dos tray records gotcha. for him um he does a lot of a lot of different stuff um cool. but he he's fantastic and yeah like chris lord algae like we've mentioned before his brother tom lord algae is incredible yes um yep. dave pensando is great uh jimmy douglas is fantastic right he uh, mixes Justin Timberlake and people like that. Jimmy Iovine for that. Jimmy right? Iovine, yep. Um, hmm. um, what's another one I've been? Um, Andy Douglas. Who, oh, gosh. Uh, who, Guys, who he's Beastie Boys. Who did the damn Beastie Boys? Help me out here. Oh, my God. Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Rick that Rubin. Was, that was... Thank you. Shit, Rick, he's only a god. I'm sorry off. I forgot his name. You can throw shit at the wall and sticks. There's tons of Rick Rubin records out there. That's you you sure. aren't getting Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's done um, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and that's something that I really like to look for is guys that are, because that's what I do. I mean, I'm right now I'm in the middle of still working on a metal record and I'm in the mm -hmm. middle of a hip hop record and an indie record. So Lucky it's like, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, and that's awesome. Like it's it being versatile is huge. You know what I mean? And right. um, I'm in the middle of a couple of projects myself. Sadly, one of them's my own thing, so I'm not going to brag too much about it. But, but uh, don't be sad. Um, I wish I had my own thing. <laughs> well, you know, you know what my I mean. own thing. I'm not going to sit here and go, my stuff's so cool. You know, but <laughs> right. um, I mean, I'm thankful to work with a lot of really great musicians in my life. But. Um, but yeah, I think all the points you guys are made are very important. You know, studying the greats and the people that, and and study the people that influence them. Right. You know right. what I mean? Um, like Chris Lord Algae, who I just keep throwing out because he's my favorite. I'm just going to go there. Um, he'll tell you to study Bob Clear Mountain. Right. Who is his inspiration? And Bob Clear Mountain will tell you to li listen to people like the Sun Studios people and stuff like that that inspired him. You know, and, and the more you go back and the more you, you study, you really, <clears throat> you're not trying to emulate any of these people, but you're taking their ideas and through that forming your own approach, your own sound, right. your own way that you like do language. It. Right. Yeah. We all use the yeah. same language. Yeah. Nobody owns a sentence. But uh, <laughs> music is a universal <laughs> right. language. Yeah, right, exactly. 
I'd also like to throw out that, I mean, if you are serious about it, reach out to the local, the local studio cats. Yes. I'm going to go out there right now and say that D Dave Roof out of Grand Blank, he runs mm -hmm. Rooftop Records. Yep. That Absolutely. Guy, that guy gives me free knowledge anytime I ask him. Great uh, guy. For the Mercurials, I always have him do the final mix and master nice. because I felt a, uh, a synergy with this guy, you know, and mm -hmm. I really truly felt like, uh, we had a great session together and I learned a lot and he never felt, make me feel like I was out of place or, or yeah. naive or whatever. Andy and that's Reed important. Also, right. Yeah. Oh Andy, yeah. Um, really Andy nice does guy. fantastic stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been to a couple of his, I've been to a couple of his classes that he's done and mm -hmm. uh, just always free. And I'm, saying, I'm pretty knowledge. sure, I'm pretty sure both Andy and David have, uh, YouTube tutorial videos. Absolutely yep, they, they absolutely do. do. I'm pretty sure they both do. So yeah, check Dave those out. Yeah, up the drum one, and I'm telling you what, like, I loved watching that because, again, I I go to Dave anyway, so I really trust him. But he captures a really great drum sound for me, and so mm -hmm. watching his tutorials was pretty dope. And uh, once again, you know, sharing the secrets, man. He just yeah. No shame in the game. The time, the time of, of, of teaching yourself out of a job is gone. It really right. is. As far as for engineers right. goes. If we, if we don't stick together and work together, then, I mean, there's, there's a, another engineer uh, probably 100 yards from you right now. Right, right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I'm not above, you know, there's, I mean, we've all, the three of us have talked about it together, that we've all wanted to work on stuff together already. I'm not above if something's beyond my scope or I'm not, figuring out something or whatever i'm not above reaching out to another engineer right to go right. hey man i'm stuck on this thing would you help me and right. nine times out of ten oh, yeah. you know nine times out of ten every one of us will be like hell yeah right you know and then if they don't help you then you know who the asshole is right <laughs> there you go <laughs> right exactly and you know yeah i send everything i mix out for uh, to, to different people for a master absolutely absolutely me too. anthony will be getting one here for long and, and hey <laughs> I mean, don't be afraid. I'll listen to it too if you want me to. If yeah. you want one, Todd, I'll I, send it out it. for sure. I'd I don't like it. I don't like mastering what I mix. So I'd I'd love yeah. to listen. I'd love to hear I like what you're working on. Man. Years also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that I mean, with with my last record that just came out um, back May twelfth. Wow, I can't believe I didn't remember that. Um, I, I got Corona. the same. Uh, <laughs> I got <laughs> I got the same way and. I would finish mixes and I would send them to just random people, like right. random friends that I know are musical or just are fans of music. Just I call them to, random victims. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but when you get New Year's on stuff, you, you can learn so much, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd send them to like the musicians that are on the projects and stuff. Nine times out of 10, I'll, I'll, it takes me a lot less time to record an album than it does to mix it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Especially if the accurate recording is good. I mean, it, yeah. Right. You know, right. I, I said earlier that bands have a misconception of thinking that they're going to record six songs in six hours. And that's super true. But right. you all, if you're good and you want to take Jake, like Anthony said, it, the recording process can be a lot simpler than the mix process. <laughs> yeah. Right. Absolutely. If you've, got good source, if you've got good source material, then the mix will mix itself, you know? Minus There's that too. Versus, yeah. versus the major surgeries that can also go on today because that's one of those, uh, that's one of those double-edged swords of this modern technology is now a lot of times when I'm hearing some, uh, some stuff that people have put up, uh, you can tell that maybe they like quantized everything to hell and so you're yes. hearing all these phase issues or, or like, compress the shit out of it right right yeah. exactly yeah. So, or normalized normalized an mp3 yep yep <laughs> or use an mp3 as a wave file in the track oh yeah. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but that's that's another thing too that i would love to touch on is that of the a lot of times I, I notice, especially in um, indie music, we run into the people who will just use the term, well, that's good enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I right. don't mean this as an insult on anybody's abilities, but we have such a instant gratification culture anymore that people just want it mixed and done and out now. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yes. I've, heard, I've heard so many recordings from bands that I've seen in person that I know for a fact are incredible. 
and are great musicians and live their their stuff is just it's powerful and it's great and you hear the recording and it doesn't even sound like the same band flat yeah it, yeah it's flat it's compressed like crazy it sounds like an am radio or something <laughs> um but i think some of that is because everybody's buddy has a record released right you know what i mean so they yeah. feel this pressure that they have to release so they release something mediocre right but but the trick is you know we're not on a timetable you know what i mean yeah. like there's no i mean there are big record labels nowadays but i mean you're never going to convince me that you really need them anymore right um right. nowadays with the with distribution being the way it is i mean you know our band's stuff is sitting in the same online store that aerosmith is right mm -hmm. i mean yeah the record label will help get people to look in that direction obviously but, algorithms exist yeah 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 and, I mean, and promotion adele, adele sold 25 million records on an independent record label exactly right. same I mean, with i mean to, and to use her an example again same with billy eilish she yeah, became I mean, famous over youtube and you know, you know some, rca and these these guys were like are just flipping their lids right now because what you know how many people probably passed her up yeah right? and then she releases she releases diy and what she she just take home three Grammys? Right. Well, the the second you know one I mean? wasn't so much DIY all all all, all together, right. but the first one was like the first album yeah. was completely self made, self produced, self released, and she blew up like gangbusters. Right. And then so then they make the second album in their home DIY like you were talking about, and yeah, I mean it was mixed and mastered by you know professionals Pros. or whatever because why wouldn't you if you've got the money right but point, yeah. right but when you listen to videos that they put out where they're going through their sessions and showing you how they made the stuff it already sounds like the record does so these pros just kind of put a little bit of fairy dust on it and you know and put it out there you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. and yeah i think a lot of big studio people that is a fear that people like us and people that um want to self make their stuff is going to be the new normal you know and and well, these people are going to have to well and you know there there's always something to be said about the experience of a giant studio i mean right. i i've been in one you know yeah. uh Tony, how many good experiences one, have you um, had a couple a couple <laughs> um but at the end of the day um nowadays anyway with the gear i have and the musicians that i know through my network of friends you know you guys included there's there's nothing that us as a collective can't do that it took a big studio to do years ago right oh, yeah. you know what i mean and i think that's amazing and you know the 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 people with the giant studios they're just gonna have to i don't think they have they're gonna go away but i think if they can adjust to the way the times are now right that you that know, could I be think, a game changer too yeah i think a lot of them uh have become these almost legacy things too the, yeah. the, the big the big studios you know the it's almost like uh you know they've already made the money to the point where they don't really have to worry about making a record in order to keep the doors open you know what i right. mean so like they they have the luxury of picking and choosing whatever they want mm -hmm. because basically essentially they've made it to the where any record they record is going to make them enough money to where it was worth it before they even decided to do it you know what i mean right yeah and i, and I think that's the opportunity <laughs> that, that people like us are afforded by having day jobs or just you know whatever other source of income we have when we work on stuff with people, we get the opportunity to work on stuff that, that we're into, that we're passionate about, that maybe we just see something in somebody and we want to just help right. them out. Um, our financial oh, yeah. lives are not hinging on, on a record. We get, right. you know, yeah. yeah, yes, we would like compensation because who does it for work that you do, but we don't have to take somebody that the cleaners to pay bills because we're already paying our bills. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think that's a really, like, it's a position I, I personally think we're all very fortunate to be in. I agree. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can be in that same position. Sure. If you really want to. You know, and I, I hope watching stuff like this maybe might just encourage somebody to be like, you know, maybe I should go get a laptop and try this out or, 
right, you know, there's three regular homies right now. Just, you know, we're, I'm doing it. You're doing here it. Here we are. You know, crap. all you know, of us are in the middle of a project uh, or two. And, right. You know, and it didn't necessarily take the degree, even though you know Jay has one. We, you and I, don't have a degree, and you, that doesn't nope. matter. Both sides of the coin are doing it. Right. Uh, Absolutely. None of, us are, yeah. none of us are loaded. Here we are, you know, still able to record and put out yeah. stuff that people are willing to listen to freely. So I think, you know. I mean, yeah, you're, that you're, degree, that degree is not, although I absolutely say go to mod if you have the ability. Right, right. sure, sure. <laughs> it's also not a ticket to, to paradise by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. Yeah. And, and there and, are guys out there with YouTube degrees that know mm -hmm. more than I do. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And, and yeah, I've never like, thought that, that a degree... I mean, a lot of people think a degree is a guaranteed job. A degree is, I mean, yeah, you have knowledge, but it's just a piece of paper unless you're putting the work mm -hmm, in afterwards. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Unless you hustle, That's right. your degree right. is pointless. Yep. Yep. You know, and, and a music technology degree couldn't be more pointless unless you hustle. <laughs> right. I mean, right. you're not going to, you're not going to get a job at RCA living in Flint. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> so you have the option of either using that t type of degree for a home studio or yep. fi you know finding a way to commercialize it right. and the yeah. only way to commercialize it in this area is inexpensively mm -hmm. right i mean right. these bands can't afford 75 dollars an hour that's just plain and simple right. yeah and nor nor should they have to i yeah. mean I can't it does not cost me 75 dollars Right. right. It doesn't cost me seventy five dollars an hour to rent. Not even close to seventy five dollars. Right. And, and that's how and that's how I like to look at it. When I when someone asks me, you know, what would you charge to do this or whatever, I always I mean, I always say it's a case by case basis depending on the situation sure. and everything. But I always look back at if it's not something I could afford, I'm not gonna charge it to somebody else either. Right. Because yeah. I was in this I was in that place. Yep. That was me. You know, I was, I was the one reaching out to somebody going, man, I don't have a lot of money. What can we do? I never yeah. want to be that person that is that roadblock again for the next generation of people with the same questions. You know what I mean? And I those big be, studios, the big studios will be like, uh, get some more money. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, money doesn't always define quality. No, not at no. it really doesn't. I, you know, one of my favorite examples to use um i i have a side project it's a band called the undesirables and uh it's me terry lydell rob johannes and uh my friend virgil brewer who writes the songs for us and we recorded the entire album here in in, in my home studio and the vocal mic that i used and because for some reason it just sounded good the microphone for the entire album on my lead vocal is the USB rock band microphone for my Xbox One. <laughs> wow. And it sounds wonderful. You know, you put a couple cool plugins on it, you, you, you tickle the noise a little bit, and for a rock band, it sounded pretty good. <laughs> you know, would I say like, that's the mic like they always it's... use? Hell no. But experimenting right. is half the fun. Oh, you yeah. know? If it sounds good, it sounds good. Right. I mean, Back yeah, to Billie got, Eilish again. She just sold a million records with a matchstick strike as a snare drum. Right. right. You know, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I've got some cool gear. I've got, you know, some Shure microphones and, you know, some condenser mics and all that crap. But um, oh, yeah. it's all, like we said, just different flavors and different paintbrushes. Right. You know. Um, it's, I guess the last topic, um, well, a couple more things. Um, so do, what do you guys, or have you guys got anything you're uh, – currently working on or are you currently finished that uh you'd like to turn anybody on to or anything that uh like anything you're jiving on that you've been working on lately oh let's see i know uh i just finished silver sporks latest so uh single uh wuhan solo and i'm in the band so, so that's not nice. exactly yeah uh, <laughs> it still counts i just plugged them on my own band. right <laughs> actually uh it was nerve-wracking you know because uh uh, Silver Spork has been around the block and they have been to the big name studios and they have put out records that sound badass, you know, that yeah. sound good in the van Absolutely. and on the cell phone. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And so that was yeah. a lot of pressure on me to try and even get it anywhere close mm -hmm. to how, you know, professional they'd had it in the past. So that was actually a lot of fun. Uh, they did really well. Uh, Is it out already? 
Uh, yeah, we put it out. Uh, I think it's still, I think the, uh, something was wrong with the uh, name or something. So uh, uh, CD Baby is like putting it in limbo, but it's on Reverb Nation, it's awesome. on YouTube and a couple other places. I'll have to check it and, out. Uh, we're doing another single right now. And uh, mm -hmm. honestly, until this COVID shit is over with, there's not a whole lot of people that are gonna drive to where I'm at because I'm not in a city at all. I'm in a kind of a small town. So not mm -hmm. only, you know, it's a, it's a it's a fun atmosphere here, but it's probably about yes. an hour from wherever the hell you are. Yeah. Yeah, I've recorded at Anthony's studio and it is a drive, but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a killer studio with a really great vibe out there. We'll have to, once this COVID crabs over, <laughs> we'll have to do this all in the same room, you know? No doubt. That sounds That'd great. Be fun, Absolutely. But maybe a different, yeah. you take turns in each other's studio and sounds oh, that'd great. Be dope. That'd yeah. be cool. Um, I've got you, projects Jay? that are I've got projects that are still cooking from before COVID. Mm -hmm. So oh, right um, I yeah I have a project that I'm working with a young Flint metal band called A Different Perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Have a, um, Is it an album or an EP or? A... Uh oh, where'd your audio go? We lost Jay. Yeah, we did. did we Once you touched the. Audio? It's fading oh. out. You did something. Can you hear me now? Aha! There you are. Welcome back. Kind of. Apparently my... Ah, there we go. Yep. Your phone hates you. And I have a technology degree, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> See what we said about degrees? They're... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, yeah, so, so uh, is, it a, is it an album or an EP? Metal record. Okay. A lot of metal in Flint. Nice. And I saw you had a symphony thing you're doing too, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, I just finished a project for the Flint Institute of Music, and I turned that in last night. Took Is six that... revisions. Nice. Is six revisions. Being... How's Damn. that being released? Um, yeah, they're putting it together for a, uh, a YouTube video that should be out here very soon. You'll have to let us know so we can post it up on our pages and stuff and share it. Yeah, as soon as I as soon as I get it, I'll I'll be everybody will know. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been uh, um, lately. I've been working on two things. I got uh, uh, my band band Undesirables is working on our second record, um, which is going pretty well. But again, COVID makes it a yeah a challenge. Yep. Um, I'm the drummer for the for the project, so I can you know, rec and, and the lead vocals, so I can record my parts first and at least we have the, the roadmap for when we can all get together right so you know everybody gets i send the tracks to everybody they figure their parts out and then we just get together um and then um my friend virgil Brubert, who used to go under the name lord virgil forever in uh in a flint in detroit and everything uh is releasing his first album in 18 years and uh i'm going to be the one producing that and uh mixing it and doing that for him so that's pretty that's pretty fun. Those are the two things that cool. I've been. Um, and then the the thing I would like to probably push the most that came out of our studio is uh, Ashley's uh, posthumous record that we did that came out last year. Um, uh, yeah, very good, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Um, it was most of it was done right here in this in this in the studio. Um, some remotely because people live in you know all over the place and. It's hard to get somebody from Kentucky to drive all the way here to play guitar for an hour. So, sure. um, luxury of this age we live in. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, the album's called Echoes, and um, it was really built from his demo recordings for the last album he was working on when he passed away, and it it turned out fantastic. I'm I'm super super proud of it. We got to uh, I got to work with some great people. I got it got uh, mastered by Hans Decline out in L.A. Who, uh, awesome. just, who just did the last U2 record. Um, oh. Yeah, he mastered. Ashley uh, loved that. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, that's how I met him was through Ashley. Uh, and he awesome. mastered a song on the last U2 record. And so, you know, that's, that's the one I would encourage everybody to get up, to go and check out. That's, I'd say that's probably my, my benchmark of what we do so far. You know what I mean? So oh, right on. I, you reach a, a new level. It's always exciting. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's important to always be trying to defeat yourself. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like, okay, that sounds sure. good. Now let's make something cooler. You know. Better, I mean? yeah. Um, last topic, I guess we'll go for uh, for this ep- for this uh, installment here. Um, what are some of everybody of you guys' favorite go to? Uh, we talk about DAWs a lot. Um, I'm a logic person, so is Jay. Um, what What do you use, Tony? I use Reaper. Reaper's fantastic. I just yeah. started uh, messing with that. I started on Pro Tools, and uh, you know you can only have so many session crashes yeah. before I just say, you know what? I would like a I would like a DAW that maybe isn't such a resource hog. And yeah. Right now, Right now, the Pro Tools police are sitting outside Anthony's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, They're like, gonna get our video oh. flagged. <laughs> <laughs> it's standard. It's standard. It's, it's the industry it. standard. It's the industry uh, standard, sir. Not anymore. I know. I know. I get ripped on all the time. But you know what? On Reddit, I'm a king. <laughs> <laughs> My mom says I'm cool. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, I use Reaper. Um, Logic, uh, I, I used once or twice in the late 90s. Ooh. Because uh, that's when Pro Tools and, and Logic were first coming out, and I was a big industrial music fan. And KMFDM okay. had just done their latest album exclusively on Pro Tools and Logic, and so my punk ass had to go see what this <laughs> was about. Yeah, and, uh, right. I mean they're all really awesome dogs. And yeah. you know, again, whatever whatever helps you create your art the best way is the best Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, the first the first record I ever made was on Cubase. Oh yeah, um, and you know I've used, I've tried all of them. I've tried Cubase. I've done Logic, uh, which is the, my main one now. I've used um, oh let me think Ableton and all that kind of stuff, um, and I just got Reaper as well. And I had it at one time before, <clears throat> but I just started diving into it again now that I have a better computer with better RAM and everything. Ah yeah. And I mean I love both of them. The thing I love about Logic is the MIDI capabilities that it has. I really love um, how, how much virtual instrument libraries that they have, the different sure. loops oh, and yeah. stuff you can build. Um, I love that I can run my Roland uh, drum set into it and through USB use any sound in Logic to make right. it just a badass sound and drum set. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so what I've been doing lately um, is I'll record in Logic and then I'll export the stems to Reaper and I'll mix in that. There you go. Because what I love about Reaper is, like you said, it, the resources are huge. Yeah. And basically every channel has its own virtual mix rack, which I love. Right. right. You know, with Logic, you have to stack them all on yeah, top of each yeah. other. And I mean, while I mean, you can side chain, do sends and returns mm-hmm. and stuff, mm-hmm. but a lot of times you need that stacking for the channel because right. you know and with logic if you don't have killer ram eventually you're going to start having buffer failures and well, you're just going to yeah, be eating if, up if you're so not, much time if you're wanting to record don't don't buy a computer with less than eight gig ram or, or you're wasting your Preach. time sure. i use eight, i've had eight gig for a year or two and i just upgraded to 16 and it's oh i need 16 bad. it's it's night and day it's, it's night and day dude Oh yeah, super crisp, super crisp. Um, plugins. Do you guys have any uh, any go to like your holy grail? Like, if you are setting up a mix, what are your go tos that you know for sure you're going to at least try on every mix you do? I've got mine's JST. Mine's JST. uh, The Joey Sturgis Tone Gain Reducer. And who does that one? Jo- JST, Joey Sturgis. Okay. Oh, that's the company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I put that on pretty much any any channel I need to be louder. <laughs> nice. It's, it's my, one of my go-to plugins. Yeah. Nice. And then the CLA plugins. CLA yeah. plugins are fantastic. Um, yeah. Just about every vocal I mix at the end of the chain has the CLA vocal plugin on it. Mm-hmm. Just nice. about. Nice. Just I, I love the immediacy that you get with it, it automatically has the delay, the reverbs, the compression, mm-hmm. all right there. A lot of I times like I don't layering know. vocals, so yeah. I'll throw yeah. one, I'll like double the track and then multiply it and throw one channel of the track down the Joey Sturgis tongue game reducer to give that super volumey yeah. vocal. 
And then I put another channel of the Chris Lord Algae uh, vocal mix. And then that gives it a little bit more echo, a little bit more reverb. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, like I, I don't tend to use the compression in the CLA vocal plugin just because I like to have the compression separate. Wow. Right. And uh, that, that way you can get more surgical with it. Um, my, my main go-to compressor is the 1176. I love the Bluey. Uh, it's a Waves. Uh, CLA's first set of things he did was he released uh, compressors. And the best one I've, I've had, I've got a few, uh, is the 1176. It's just amazing. On any vocal, that sounds great. My vocal chain normally is the SSL um, into an 1176 into the CLA plugins is usually my starting point, you know. And then, then I'll mess around with things. Like, I love uh, Slate Audio has some amazing stuff. Um, but yeah, my, my main, those are my main, my main ones. And then I, um, I, I use the Kramer tape machine a lot. Oh yeah. Nice. I, I love the tape machine plugins. There's, um, there's that, that record sound that we were talking about. Yep, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, Kramer's tape machine is wonderful and uh, slate uh, digital uh, virtual tape machine is fantastic. And what I love about the slate stuff is it's subscription based. So right. I'm paying 10 bucks a month yeah. and I have every plugin they've ever made and ever will make for the rest of my life. And you can play it by the year, pay it by the year too, which is way cheaper. Mm -hmm. yep. But it's yep. still, but it's still you monthly. Use Slate, don't you? you use Slate, don't you, Anthony, quite a bit? Yes, sir. Yep, yep. I have a subscription to them as yep. well. Yeah, I, well, uh, the, the year one is nice because you pay it by the year, but you don't have to pay it all at once. Right, right. Which is really nice. It's just a contract. You're locked into a 12 month contract and then, yep. The price is ten bucks as opposed to twenty four bucks a month if you yeah. don't want a commitment. Right. So what are you, Anthony? What are your uh, some of your go tos? Oh man. Um, well, I think you and I talked about this earlier uh, separately in a discussion. I uh, I love the Waves collection of API plugins that they yes. make. Yes. I use probably uh, what the five sixty and the twenty five hundred. Um, I use those a lot in tandem, the EQs and the compressors there. I use 560 um, a lot. Yeah, it's, that's Sounds my go-to. Especially, for, oh, go ahead. No, that's, the 560 is my go-to for almost everything, honestly. I just, I love the way it sounds. And if that's as close as I can get to actual outboard API for a while, then I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Right, right. Um, I use the 560 on, uh, on hi-hats a lot. Oh, um, yeah. And it's really great on overhead mics, too. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Absolutely. And uh, I, let's see, uh, how about, uh, since I'm a synth freak, I will throw out, uh, Waves has a VST called Codex. Really? And, yeah, and Codex is, well, it's, uh, it, you can get super deep or you can let it do everything for you. Nice. Oh, wow. either, and either way, it's gonna sound really, really badass. Like you really worked hard to sequence this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check that out. That sounds yeah. really cool. It, it was, it's one of my favorite ones. If I'm not using my actual synthesizers that I have, I'm using Codex. I usually mm -hmm. don't use any other ones. That's, it's got almost anything I could ever really want out of it. So well, I, would I think, recommend it. And I think it's important to have like certain plugins and things that you learn the ins and outs of Oh, yeah. really well because then you always have a go-to that you know what it's going to sound like anytime you put it on there yep you know what i mean i used to i'm going to admit something i used to have a lot of cracked things right right everybody starts that way right right um, mm -hmm. and we had a cracked set of waves plugins at one point that probably had 70 different freaking plugins in it oh yeah um and when i got my own stuff um instead of doing that i'm like you know one because you want to be legit you don't want to get busted right. for stealing but um i decided to instead of getting as many as i could to just hone in on the ones that i really like right well your really computer use. can't handle a bunch of junk anyways right exactly it's it's, so, it's i mean it's like quality <laughs> over quantity you know what i mean for sure yeah. It's like disc golf. Honestly, I only use about five or six different <laughs> kinds of discs. I don't have 30 different kinds in my bag. Right. But I have been finding lately, and uh, I want to throw this out for people watching um, that might not 
really be ready to start dropping some money on plugins because that it can get expensive. That's a rabbit hole. Uh, it is. Uh, what's nice is Waves right now is doing a thing where they're doing forty percent off on almost every plugin they have. Right. Which is Except killer. Abbey Road. Yeah. No doubt. I'm gonna have to No, that's forty percent off. It, no, Abbey yeah, Road is forty yeah, percent off. Yeah, some of the good now. ones are. I know. I, know. I was just teasing. But you know. no, the forty percent off of Abbey Road is still two hundred bucks. So what are you gonna do? Right. Oh, right. I, oh, I got yeah. some Abbey Road stuff. That's I have great. um I have the plate, which is fantastic. I have the, plate the, reverb. Uh, the room simulator, I have that yeah. and uh I have the tape, uh the analog tape um uh, plug in and a couple other things from them. But All there's a few things. websites you can go to. Um I just got a bundle and it's they're and they're free. Um it's a company called Blue Cat Audio that does some really I know cool you're talking stuff. About. EQs, yeah. compressors, um I I use uh, Plugin open Alliance. Source. Yeah, open. Yep, open source. Uh, Plugin Alliance is another one. They've got some cool stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, a new one I just found is called Analog Obsession, and that is a lot of free stuff too. And this guy builds them all himself, and he has um, uh, what do you call it? They're they're like it, but they're not legally that thing. They're the versions oh. of uh, yeah, clones. Thank you. Uh, clones of like uh, Pugtech or Pugtech. Oh, yeah. How do you say it? Joseph? Pug How do you say his last name? I don't remember. Anyway, Pugtech audio stuff. He has a lot of that. He has, okay. he has Neve simulation stuff, Ooh, um, yeah. and, and it's all free. And uh, yeah. a, a place called uh, IK Multimedia um, just released their uh, their Amplitude plugin that's been around forever, and it's free now. So nice. people get it for free. You don't get all the – you only get like 10 or 11 different amps and stuff to use. But it's a good starting point for people that don't want to – Right. Right. You know? Right. So that's what I would suggest. If, you know, go out and, you know, get your gear like we're talking about. But when it comes to plugins, dive into the free ones first. Right, yeah. See, yeah. see how, you, how it feels. And then if you're digging it, then, you know, reach out to the places that you actually pay for them. You know, right. and start just one at a time. Don't fall down the rabbit hole like we do. Um, and, you know, really just start trying it out. It's, it's, and, you know, it's seasoned to taste, as they say. You know what I mean? That's right. Um, but, yeah, I, I really want to thank you guys for doing this. I think this is, this is a yeah, lot of fun. Cool. I and, I mean, I mean, hopefully the music nerds out there, at least, were uh, enjoying our ramblings of, <laughs> of, uh, of yeah, studio I stuff. Myself. Same here, man. I enjoyed it. To do this a lot more often, man. Um, For sure. That's I got good. a couple other guys that are going to be joining us eventually. Um, my friend uh, Sola Zeus, who did uh, uh, 12 Dead Roses. Um, oh, okay. And he's going to be joining us here uh, on one of the next ones. He's an amazing producer. He is, he's, he's uncanny. He's so good. Um, but, you know, hopefully people can take away with from this one. You know, we gave them some, some cool places to start. You know what I mean? And, please make sure to get on Facebook and check out vehicle city studio, check out flatlander audio recordings and the backroom studios. If anybody has any questions, any of us are more than happy to help. Right. Um, oh, you know, yeah. it's what we're here for. You know what I mean? Um, so until next time, you know, Tony, uh, Jay, I'd like to thank you guys both for, uh, for being a part of this. Absolutely. Have a good day, gentlemen. All right, guys, have a good night and uh, we will see you all soon. Take care. Later. Bye-bye.